survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at veteran Rosita who is going to be the character reward for the upcoming season store that will start with the CRWs coming up in the next coming weeks you'll be able to progressively gain her tokens over the course of you know CRWs and blitzes and be able to get your hands on copies of this character I will hopefully break down how easy it is to get this character fully but we're going to check out her kit. Now, visually, Rosita looks quite cool on the right-hand side. She's wearing the kind of known get-up that we know her for. She's got, like, the, the green shorts on, the green hat. We kind of know the visuals. She's got a jacket on this time around. But on the left-hand side, I did draw attention to that. She's just standing on the car. It's just kind of funny. But it's got the number seven on the car. You can't really see it very well here. But, um, yeah, the visuals look really nice. I, I can't really complain too much about that. You can see that weapon fully upgraded does get quite the damage upgrades it's gonna be interesting the visuals should look pretty good at level 1440 limit break three she has got 35,276 attack 35,276 defense and 17,638 hp she is going to be a strong character of the support role gold mythic of course and she will be a new member of the alexandria allegiance now, taking a look at Rosita's Adrenaline Rush, it has got a recharge rate of 66 AP. Make a critical attack against four enemies for 300% damage each. The primary target gets minus 50 AP for two turns. This fighter gets 100% attack and defense for the rest of combat, which increases by 35% every turn indefinitely. This is kind of interesting. She will be obviously hitting... Four different enemies. If you see what her specialist skill is, when she hits those crit hits, it will also proc that specialist skill. And the main target basically will not be able to get any AP to rush for three turns. The turn that you do it, the next turn, and then obviously the turn afterwards, they'll have to gain enough AP, which is generally going to take two turns to gain 50 or more AP. So it's actually really, really devastating to the character that she actually targets. Her getting 100% attack and defense just for the rest of combat would be really powerful. But the fact that it incrementally increases by 35%, 5%, sorry, 35% every turn indefinitely means that obviously the, the longer the fight goes on, the more powerful veteran Rosita gets, the more powerful that specialist skill gets and obviously scales to maybe boost the damage output for the century and anything in her passives as well. You want to get this adrenaline rush off nice and early. If for nothing else, guys, this character is going to be elite for Alexandria... Um, faction assault you'll be able to replace those vincents finally potentially or you could team her up with vincent is obviously up to you but yeah should be really really good in faction assault but could be really nice on certain bleed burn attack teams because of the scaling of this adrenaline rush okay so here we are on turn one and we have got the adrenaline rush up of rosita i'm going to just hit the adrenaline rush and you should see she should attack four separate opponents she should prioritize, obviously, different opponents. And then, obviously, she's hitting guaranteed crits. Now, they can be resisted crits, just so you know. She is a support character, so she isn't going to bypass that crit resistance. But we'll hit it. And as you can see, three of the characters that she hit do get hemorrhage. And that's because of her special skill. Now, this special skill does scale off of her highest stat, which I think should mean that her 100% attack and 100% defense would, obviously, improve that. We're just going to hit the defend actions and see those go up to 135%. The defense is still 100%. That might go up to 135% when it goes back to her turn. We'll see if it if it works that way. It's gone up to 135% attack straight away. Yes. Okay. So it went up to 135% when it went back to her turn. Then the next turn it should go up to 170%, so on and so forth. So this is going to boost her signature move output. This is going to obviously improve her future adrenaline rushes. So she's going to be hitting pretty hard early on, but it's just going to get more harder hitting as the fight goes on. Now, if we look at the upgrades on this Adrenaline Rush, you can see at grade two, it gets plus one critical attack target. So originally it is only two targets and it goes up to three targets that she'll hit. At grade four, it will be an upgrade where this fighter gets 100% attack and defense for the rest of combat, which increases by 35% every turn indefinitely. That is actually very nice. And you only need one copy to get that buff, so that's actually quite good. 
At limit break one, it gets an upgrade where the primary target gets minus 50 AP for two turns. And then lastly, at limit break three, it gets plus one critical attack target again. So this time it goes from three critical attack targets up to four. And it does obviously prioritize a new target. So it will try and, you know, target four separate characters. It's kind of like the Rosita that already exists, the, um, the alert version that does the same, but with her signature move. So very interesting when it comes to this Adrenaline Rush. I like the fact that the attack and defense are just going to scale. Obviously, this is very, very nice indeed. We'll check out that specialist skill later on in the video, but I think it works where her higher stat is what is based on the hemorrhage damage that she's going to do, which means you could make her more defense-based or you could make her more attack-based. Now, her attack stat is the higher of the two stats, so it will get nicer boosts, so that is generally the way to go. Her usability just with this Adrenaline Rush Infection Assault is going to be very, very good, but the rest of her kit will determine how usable she would potentially be in things like raids and war. Now, she would also be pretty good in the current roadmaps because she'd be able to put down a lot of hemorrhage early on. Hopefully, she has something else that's kind of nice, something like decap potential or something like this. That would bring the usability up quite massively. But we'll have to wait and see in the rest of the video. But off the bat, the Adrenaline Rush isn't too bad at all. When it comes to Faction Assault, it's amazing. But like I said, it, really, it just depends on the rest of the kit for how it's going to be usable elsewhere. Now, the first part of another part of her kit is going to be the signature move, and it is called Swift Safety. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one, cooldown of two turns, number of uses unlimited. Stun a line of enemies for one turn if the primary target has bonus HP. Make a critical attack against that line of enemies for 300% damage each. This fighter gets 31 AP. So, obviously, the stun is nice if the bonus HP is there. She will stun the target, but she will obviously bypass the bonus HP with the hemorrhage damage afterwards. So that's just something to note. It will be guaranteed critical attack procs against that line of enemies. So you won't have to go for any sort of um, increased chance to critting on her kit, which is very nice indeed. You can go for crit multiplier to increase the damage that she actually does with those crits, which is nice. And also the last part where she gets 31 AP... She has a 66 AP cost rush. When you do a signature move, you get 35 plus 31, which means she's going to have a turn two natural rush, which is obviously very nice indeed, because then you can get that adrenaline rush out very nice and quick. Get those 100% ticks rolling as quick as possible. You could even team her up with someone like Akira, obviously, who has burn, and she could get commanded turn one by Akira, who doesn't have the AP gain that someone like Laura has, but he does have the massive burn potential. So the potential with that sort of team working together in burn bleed could actually be pretty nice. So here we are at the start of the fight. And I'll use the signature move against the bottom line. Now we will stun this line of enemies. Because one of the characters has bonus HP. The one I select. So make sure you select the character with bonus HP. But in this case they both do. But it is what it is. We did actually have a resist on um, the stun. Because we have got Clementine lead. There is going to be potential debilitating status effect um like resist now i can command her turn one and as you can see the entire team gets burned but then i can obviously rush with her afterwards she'll do damage and so on and so forth she could potentially do quite high amounts of damage because she's obviously guaranteeing the crits i can scale this which is obviously nice as well and you can see there's now hemorrhage and burn on the enemy if i put like zachary in this team there could be normal bleed as well very nice potential, honestly, when it comes to burn bleed in terms of getting the stuff off quickly. And don't forget, obviously, hemorrhage does scale up. Um, it doesn't look like the second proc of hemorrhage stacked on to the first. Maybe it's only one per turn proc. I'll uh, obviously message Scriptly to see how that hemorrhage special skill works. But if you have skill-based hemorrhage, it obviously does stack with the current hemorrhage that's already down. Now going straight into the upgrades, you can see at grade 3 she gets an upgrade where she stuns a line of enemies for one turn if the primary target has bonus HP. At grade 5 it gets minus 1 to starting cooldown, so at a low grade it goes to a turn 1 starting cooldown plus a low grade you also get the scaling damage on the Adrenaline Rush. So she does become pretty useful, at least for Faction Assault, at a very very low grade which is nice. Then at LB2 it gets an upgrade where this fighter gets 31 AP. And this is obviously going to mean that she can get that Adrenaline Rush off quicker. As you saw, I could do it naturally turn two, 
command turn one. I'd say this is a minimum if you do want to potentially use this in any sort of normal attack team, just because you have to get the ball rolling on her adrenaline rush when it comes to the stats increases, the hemorrhage being laid down as quickly as possible. So this is very nice that she does manage to get a natural turn two rush. It is unnatural AP gain, of course, so she can be exhausted. So just be aware of the fact that she can take significant damage if she has exhaust. But otherwise, it looks actually pretty decent when it comes to the combo between her signature and Adrenaline Rush to get the ball rolling as quickly as possible. There's a little bit of control in here as well, which is a nice little bonus. I wouldn't necessarily say this is anything too amazing to really th think about, but it is just a nice little bonus. It will stop weapons from procking on the line she attacks that's just worth noting so she can obviously have a better chance of not being like stunned absolute defended so on and so forth so yeah the scenic troop is interesting like i say i think the combo with the adrenaline rush is nice increasing her speed is the most important thing here i think now checking out rosita's mythic abilities these are the passive skills she has of course got cunning because she is a support character when attacking or being attacked 30 percent less likely to trigger enemy weapon effects and walker effects and then the second one's called Pillage. When attacking, a 100% chance to steal two positive status effects from the enemy. Now, she is a strong character, so she would be able to hold the Ransack weapon. And I do believe this would work if you had the Ransack weapon and you obviously propped Pillage. You could potentially be able to steal up to four to five enemy effects because there's the improved Ransack that is available as well. That could be really cool. That could be really cool. Be able to steal five effects from an enemy. Like I say, very, very nice indeed. The next one's called Blood Mark. At the start of each turn, a 100% chance a random enemy gets minus 15 defense for each enemy with a bleed status effect for two turns. This means she can combo potentially with some percentage damage dealers. It also means that on that um, faction assault team, she would obviously increase the amount of damage that enemy could potentially take from other sources, not just from her hemorrhage, not just from burn bleed. And the last one is called Bleed Out. Increase all bleed damage this fighter does by 25%. This would include her specialist skill hemorrhage, but would also include like if she was modded to actually have bleed on attack, which could potentially be a good idea because that's her bleed damage to be able to lay down. And because her attack scales massively off of her Adrenaline Rush, obviously... It's going to increase the amount of damage that she's going to lay down with that bleed initially anyway because um, because it's based on the attack stat. You can get a, a Paragon, I think, is 8% of the character's attack put in bleed. If she's got 100,000, that's 8k, but every time she gets the increase from 100%, 135%, 170%, it just goes up and up and up. If you have a character that extends bleed, it's just going to stay on the enemy for a very long time. Someone like Rhodey you could team her up with in attack teams. Very nice potential in my opinion. You could also even give her a burn mod as well. And she'd lay down burn with her adrenaline rush on every enemy she hit. That could be interesting as well. So yeah, I think the burn bleed potential on this character is quite good. You could have her in a full burn bleed team. Or she could just be that off-brand niche character on your attack team. That does lay down burn bleed hemorrhage on turn 2 to 4 characters potentially doing massive amounts of damage i will mod this character for the next attacks just so you can see what i'm talking about okay so here we are off of turn one and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do the signature move against the bottom line i have got burn and bleed mods on this character now so i will be putting down some extra damage over time obviously this scales off the attack that you have on the character it does mean that you know obviously the higher attack you have the more damage it's going to do as you can see, we have got three damage over time effects. I'll just defend on Clementine. I've managed to put down 20k on turn one, and this character hasn't got massive attack stat right now. You know, we haven't got the 1535 surrounding team. We haven't got the massive attack buff, which we have got now. Now, if I do the Adrenaline Rush, I should be able to do it to four enemies, and this is where it could stack up quite heavily. If you've got someone like Wanderer, you know what it's like because he does pretty much the same. He puts down hemorrhage himself. It is actually worth putting a burn mod on him. And you can get that to scale up really nicely. And obviously that damage is going to get higher and higher as the attack stat goes up on Rosita. And that's lots of damage over time for enemies. The higher her attack stat, the higher the three damage over time things that she can apply based on putting those two mods on her can actually do.
And I'd say you would definitely want to put a burn and a bleed mod on her if you were using her as like the off-brand character on an attack team. If you were using a full burn bleed team, you wouldn't necessarily have to do the burn, for instance, because obviously only the highest source of burn will actually work. But bleed stacks, so it's always worth doing the bleed mod. So it could have good potential regardless there, which is actually kind of nice. Now, if you look at the upgrades on her passives, you can see at grade one, she gets the first half of pillage. When attacking, 50% chance to steal two positive status effects from the enemy. At grade two, she gets the first half of cunning, where it's 15% less likely to trigger enemy weapon effects and walker effects when attacking them. At grade three, it's pillage two, making a 100% chance to steal two positive status effects from an enemy. This is obviously really nice. Inbuilt ransack is very powerful indeed. Then at grade four, she gets the first half of blood mark at the start of each turn. 50% chance a random enemy gets minus 15% defense for each enemy with a bleed status effect for two turns. Then at grade five, she gets the first half of bleed out, increase all bleed damage this fighter does by 10%. Moving on to the limit break, she has cunning two at limit break one. When attacking or being attacked, 15% less likely to trigger enemy weapon effects and walker effects. This obviously stacks with cunning one, making it 30% total. Limit break two, blood mark two comes in, where at the start of each turn, 100% chance a random enemy gets minus 15% defense for each enemy with a bleed status effect for two turns. And then limit break three, bleed out two comes in where it increases all bleed damage. This fighter does by a further 15%, making it 25% total. This is, like I say, really nice when it comes to her overall kit. It is boosting the bleed potential on her hemorrhage, so on and so forth. Also, the bleed mods that you potentially could put down as well. It looks really, really nice, if I'm honest when it comes to what you need from Rosita's actual kit. Now, is it good enough and fast enough for attacks when it comes to war or when it comes to uh, raids? It may not be for like the top tier. It may not be, it most likely won't, unless you're building a burn bleed team. However, it could be good at punching up against teams that you would struggle against because it bypasses a lot of their most important stats. Things like bonus HP, defense rating, that sort of thing. And that is actually not too bad at all. Now, do remember, because she can do her signature with off of turn one, she can actually do the inbuilt ransack to a line of enemies straight away. And then on turn two, she has a natural rush where she can then ransack four enemies on the defense team. This means against full Telltale teams, she will be able to steal at least four enemies, Halos, on turn two as a minimum. And she could have potentially stolen every single Halo on the defense team. If you give her a ransack weapon as well, she'll be stealing potentially lots and lots and lots of buffs. Lots of buffs indeed. Now in Faction Assault, I don't think she actually needs ransack on her weapon. Just it being in her passives is enough. But she could potentially have like stun on attack just to give yourself extra chance to proc control on those bosses. And just stack up that burn bleed and, uh, and hemorrhage as you attack. So the passives definitely work for her kit. Should be very nice indeed for increasing that dot damage. Now you've seen this occurring during my little clips before and it is going to be the specialist skill. It's called Hemorrhage 2. When this specialist lands a critical hit on a target, apply 5% of this fighter's highest stat as Hemorrhage Bleed for the rest of combat. Hemorrhage amount unaffected by temporary stat boots. Oh, okay. I actually thought that Hemorrhage was increased by attack boost. That is actually kind of strange because she gets a massive attack boost on that Adrenaline Rush. It will not affect the special skill. That is actually a bit disappointing. Uh, but she will get boost to her combat mods. So burn bleed mods are now even more important because they will definitely get boost from that attack stat. But um, this hemorrhage obviously will continue to scale up. I don't know if you can reapply hemorrhage to an enemy and it will stack with them and it will be like two separate sources. If you have a deep cuts weapon, that is how that works. But um, I'll have to actually ask Scopely if this is working as intended because... I did test it out and I couldn't reapply hemorrhage to the same target where it effectively added the same hemorrhage again, which is like I said, you can do with a deep cuts weapon, which is which is a bit disappointing because it means the specialist isn't as good as just a basic weapon adding hemorrhage, which doesn't make any sense. The specialist should always be the most powerful type of that kind, in my opinion. You know, someone who is a specialist hemorrhage should always be better than someone who's just holding a weapon with hemorrhage on it but that's my opinion it does use five percent of the fighter's highest stat so if you did want to build this character more defense based you could go that way or more hp based if you built the hp really high 
on a HP based attack team, it could work. You could put her on a defense team and try and cheese it around. The signature move off of turn one would be pretty decent, potentially stunning enemies. And obviously, her rush off of turn two could be potentially hitting lots of characters, ransacking them, also laying down the hemorrhage plus. If you've got a burn or bleed mod on Rosita, it would also do that. If she's hidden behind a shield, like I said, it could be just a little bit annoying to deal with. But otherwise, her defensive stats are not that amazing. So she's more of an attack team character for sure. Now, unfortunately, veteran Rosita does not have an attached weapon. But on the left hand side, there is an attached weapon in her hands. And it has got the number seven on it. You'd think this would be some sort of weapon for like war itself. Potentially it could be the war of champions weapon teaser already. Because we have had that in the past with someone like Eris. Where the weapon that was the war of champions weapon was actually in her visuals. So could this be the, the war of champions weapon visuals? That would be kind of cool. Will it be a strong weapon? It does say seven on it. It would be war of champions season seven. We'll have to wait and see that. But when it comes to veteran rosita's weapon there's a quite a few options you could go for more attack based weapon you could also go for like a, a ransack based weapon it's completely up to you it's worth testing out for sure it really depends on the kind of team you're building her in if you're building her in a damage over time team ransack will probably be more important but if you're building her in a non-damage over time team then you know maybe her doing a bit more damage would be more important but at the same time you might need ransack because generally speaking someone having it is actually quite a good idea however she has got it built into her kit you might think hey that's that's enough i don't need to double down on ransack i've already got it in built in her kit i can go for damage on her weapon try and get her to nuke as much as possible and she should be able to hit pretty hard because those are guaranteed crits you can obviously manipulate that with the weapon that you put in her hands based on you know hitting them with the 100 hp 1535s and obviously combat mods with crit multiplier so on and so forth so she shouldn't be too bad when it comes to just pure damage anyway so that is gold mythic veteran rosita and at a very minimum she'll be very very good for the faction assault for alexandria she should be improve your team regardless in there but she could have some niche usage on attack teams in raids and war but maybe even those more difficult roadmaps like i say so she has got some all-round gameplay usage which should be pretty good for the overall player base i think if you're just looking towards the top end of war attacks well i think you're going to generally be disappointed a lot of the time unless you're dropping advance and ultra and that's just kind of how the game is but when it comes to a character that's usable in wider parts of the game veteran rosita should be it she is going to be available in the upcoming store get your tokens in blitzes and crws it seems like you maybe only need two copies of this character to really get the ball rolling in Faction of Sword. I'll be testing her out as soon as I do get her for all the gameplays. I want to thank you very much for tuning into this video. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.